Oh my God, did you get a notice of deficiency on your H2B application? Ah, gasp, horrible, scary. How do you respond? Are you in a panic? What do you do? What do you not do? Let's talk about it after the break. Hey everybody, welcome back to Law Great. My name is Damian Noble. I'm the attorney here at Frontier Tech Law. Now, that might change. We might get bought, hint, hint, maybe. I don't know, we might. We might change our name. There might be a big announcement here soon, but my name is staying the same, Damien DeNoble, and this channel's name is staying the same, Law Great. And uh, we're talking about H2Bs today. So we're gonna be doing the split screen here. Uh, Amazing Santiago is going to magically make me appear alongside, perhaps. Perhaps I'm going to be in a circle over uh, 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 what I'm talking about here because we're talking notices of deficiency today. You got one, which is why you're watching this video and you wanna figure out how do you reply and what do you say? Well, today I'm gonna to show you the how and then we're gonna go through uh, in future videos about what you might say, even though I'll, I'll show you in a, a clear example here of, of how to appropriately, appropriately respond uh, to what's being asked and how to actually find what you need to respond to. So without further ado, here we go. You received an email, okay? And that email, now we're gonna have it here on screen somewhere, is do not reply OFLC correspondence for case H400, blah, 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 blah. So you receive this email, it has your case number there, and it has an attachment. Now, if you don't have an attachment, that's bad. You know, sometimes Outlook or other programs will strip out attachments. Okay, make sure it has an attachment, okay? It's here, okay? If you don't see it, go into your flag portal, Okay, I'm on my flag portal. Go into your cases tab. Okay, so you're in your flag account. You know, if you again, if you haven't gotten an attachment email, you're gonna click on your case number and you're going to see down here, correspondence, and you can just download it straight from there, okay? And you should be able to open it up, all right? Anyway, let's go back to our email, okay? So we have it here and it's notice of deficiency. It sounds, sounds so bad when you read it. The first two and a half pages are standard for everybody, okay? A lot of people get scared when they read this. The application cannot be accepted for consideration, okay? Uh, with citations to the relevant standard, okay. This is just, it doesn't mean it's not getting accepted, it just means you gotta fix it, okay? Um, and then uh, it says, in accordance with blah, 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 the employer may submit a modified application within 10 business days, okay? All this means is you got 10 days to respond, okay? You have to respond, in fact. Even if you're planning on withdrawing, it's a good idea to respond. You gotta respond, okay? Uh, and then it gives you ways that you can respond, and this is the key part. You can do it in the flag system, you can do it by email, or you can do it by mail. I wanna be really clear here. Unless you have to, because you're stuck on a highway somewhere, your cell phone has broken and you just happen to have printed out your NOD response and you can't get it there by flag or by email, do not send by mail because it just takes so long. And the mail rooms right now at all government agencies are a hellhole. You do not want your physical response being sent by mail, especially by USPS. So instead, what we wanna do is respond either by flag or by email. Flag was down for me in the October cycle for a couple of applications, so I responded by email, no problem, it's pretty fast. But by far the best thing you can do is reply through the flag system, which I'm gonna show you in just a little bit. All right, back to the application. The other thing you wanna pay attention to is you don't wanna submit a response through more than one avenue. So you don't wanna go through the flag system and through the email system and through physical mail. All right. And finally, this little note is basically, this isn't the end of it. The officer may issue more notices of deficiency. Although that usually happens when new questions are raised in your response. Usually if you haven't responded at all, or you haven't responded adequately, you will usually just get a denial. So a second notice of deficiency comes when you raise new questions in your response, which is gonna be normal for some of the kind of le more offbeat uh, applications for workers that, 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 that aren't as common in, in, in this uh, process, okay? And then uh, finally, it gives you some information 
which for now you can ignore about appealing. All right. All right. So after the three pages, we finally get to the meat of it, which is the section that lists all your deficiencies. In this application, there's actually just one deficiency. Okay. Uh, it has to do with an Appendix C uh, where we included an attachment instead of writing it into the form. The flag system is getting updated every year, so this is just the way we're used to doing it, but they want us to do it a different way. And here's what I want you to pay attention to. It lists the deficiency here, okay? It lists what uh, code of federal regulation section the deficiency is under here. Okay. And that's really important because as you get through these, you'll notice that the deficiencies can only be based on that Code of Federal Regulations, and that's where you should argue from if there's an argument to be made. Um, it it kind of lists it here. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can almost skip all of that. You know, it's, it's good to read it so you understand what they're saying. But you want to go to the section that says Modification Required. And in this case, it's telling us to do two things. And you want to read this part carefully. Here it says, the employer must confirm that the information on the separate Appendix C supporting document is accurate. If the information on the separate Appendix D C is accurate, the employer must grant the department permission to complete the Appendix C on its behalf. If the information on the separate Appendix C is not accurate, the employer must provide accurate information and grant the department permission to complete the Appendix C on the employer's behalf. We require your written permission to make any corrections to the application on your behalf. So what do we do? We have to confirm that the application is correct or not, that attached Appendix C, and we have to give the department uh, permission to complete the Appendix C. So how do you do that? Really simple. So I've opened up an NOD response here. In your response, whether you're doing it by email, whether you're doing it through flag or by written communication, uh, what you want to do is, is have some basic things. You want to have the date, you want to have the name of the parties that this is in relation to, right? So you want to have the contact name, you want to have the name of the company, okay? And I use the DBA and the formal name, you want to have their address. If you're an agent and attorney, you want to put your attorney name number on there, just like they do for you, right? So basically you just copy the header. And then importantly, you must include the case number, okay? Um, and uh, you want to make sure that you tell them what this is. So this is response to notice of deficiency, H2B. And then here it is. What did I, what, how did I respond to that? I just said, we confirm that the information on the separate Appendix D supporting document is accurate. The employer through counsel grants the department permission to complete the Appendix C on its behalf. Sincerely, my name, attorney for employer. That's it. That's the entirety of the response. Notice that it's a paragraph long, okay? So that's not, that's not that big a deal in this case. Now, we've had some responses, woo boy, you know, they can get pretty big. But the key here was understanding where to find the deficiency, understanding that there's a separate section, separate section called modification required that under that deficiency heading that tells you what they actually want you to do. And then going ahead and putting that in a response. Now what happens here, we just have one deficiency. But what happens if we have multiple deficiencies? What you wanna do in that case is, uh, best practice is if you can respond to all of them in one document, do so. If you need multiple attachments, that's no problem. In your email or in your flag account, you're going to include multiple attachments. So how do we do? How do we how do we respond in flag account? Super simple. So let's go back here. You know, you'll see that in this case, I've already uploaded the stuff. You just go to actions. Okay. N NOD response. A window will open up. Describe the document. I like to put NOD response, H2B, okay? And then browse for your file and upload it. And it should be here, you know, we'll download the response here. And there it is, okay? So now it's part of our file. Uh, if we're doing, if we needed multiple documents, I would put another NOD response and I might put something like NOD response, H2B, additional attachments, you know, and just and just do it that way. Although I would want to harken back in my response to the, you know, I'd want to note in my initial response that I was attaching attachments, which could, separately, maybe I have an Excel file, maybe I have some sort of other file, which I can't easily put into one document. Okay, and that's really it. And the other thing you would do is uh, just respond to the this flag TLC at Chicago deal to go. Now, I want to make one thing sure clear. If you just respond to this, okay, 
that's not the email. You can't just respond to the email that sent you this. That's not the same email. This is flag at dol.gov. You need tlc.chicago at dol.gov, okay? It's a different email than the one that sent you the notice of deficiency. So don't make the mistake, because people often do, of like replying to that email. You'll just get kicked back. You need to go to tlc.chicago dol.gov. And same thing, I mean, you could basically just do something like this. And you wanna make sure that in the subject line, you're putting H2B, NOD, NOD, H2B response. And then in subject line, actually put your case number. Okay. And you can even include a separate attachment, right? If you want on that. And that's really it. And again, we want to stay away from that uh, paper option unless we really, really, really have to. Okay, so that's it. So you've you've opened up your notice of deficiency. You've identified what you have to do. You've you you look at the deficiency heading. You look at the modifications required, and you respond either through the flag portal or by email or under just it has to be horrendous circumstances by mail, and you're doing it within 10 days. Okay, remember it is a race, so you should try to get it turned around as quickly as possible. If you need help on these. Uh, we do provide those services, um, and we are happy to talk to you if you do need help. All right. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Good luck uh, on your continuing H2B journey.